So I am Britta Gustafson. I know some of you. I don't know some of you. It's pretty cool to meet you all. I'm very excited that you all are here because I have been extremely excited about Local Wiki for especially the past six months and for a while before that. Uh, my day job is being a community manager for Cydia, which is the alternative to the App Store for jailbroken iPhones. And something I do for fun is community management. <laughs> so I have been working on a local wiki for the region of Isla Vista, which is in Santa Barbara County in Southern California. It's not a city. It's not a town. It's an unincorporated census designated place, <laughs> you know, just to be clear. And stuff we're going to do today. We're going to explain how I got into this. You know, what, what is my context? Where am I coming from? We're going to explain, or I'm going to explain, what Local Wiki is and where it comes from. I'm going to talk about some of what I've worked on and how I've learned about managing Local Wiki, some of the lessons I've learned from it. And I'm going to share some advice on how to do this yourself and how to grow and contribute to the Local Wiki in your community. And then we're going to do some editing together. Like, I have a goal, everybody's going to do one edit at least. And we'll probably get a lot more done, but you know, like, small goals. Pretty good. All right, how did, I, how did I end up with this hobby of being an amateur historian? I like taking pictures of buildings. I've liked this since I was in high school. And there was this building across the street from my high school, the Shrine Auditorium. And it's this really weird building. It's huge. It takes up the size of a city block. And it's where the Oscars have been held for decades before they moved to another place in Los Angeles. I was like, what is this building? Why is it, why is it this like, weird Orientalist, like Arabic-style building? That's an auditorium. When was it built? Who made it? And I took hundreds of pictures of it, and almost all of them were terrible pictures. Because like, how do you take a picture of a building that big? But like, I would go to like, the parking lot across the street, the parking structure, and like, take a picture from the top down. I was just fascinated by it. And uh, the second building here is a building I used to work in in downtown San Francisco, just an ordinary office job. And one time after work, when I was still working, my coworkers weren't, they were fooling around and looking around the building. And they found inside the fire escape area a really old cast iron staircase that was for the fire escape. And we were really surprised by this because the rest of the building has been heavily renovated to you know, fit office building standards. But we realized that this is an old building. It used to look different. You just can't renovate a cast iron staircase because it's much too heavy. So they left it there. Uh, and I started researching this building. Like, like who, like, you know, I started getting interested in who has sat in my seat and looked out the same window that I've looked out 50 years ago or 100 years ago. Like, especially since San Francisco has changed so much in the past 20 years with the technology industry. Like, what was here before? And I found out, you know, it used to sell shoes. It used to have like diamond sales and textbook sales and all different kinds of merchants and a, like a trade association for wine and a like government, um, like during the Works Project Progress Administration, there was a writer's office there. And I told all my coworkers this and they were like, that's, that's cool, Verna. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, like last year or so, I saw somebody on the website medium.com writing a long article. He works at Medium. He, his name is uh, Marcin Wishery. I don't know how to pronounce it, but he's cool. And he wrote this very long article researching all the history of his building. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, I like this guy. And he invited you know, the readers of the article to write their own articles about their own office buildings in San Francisco as like an interesting sort of porthole into the history of this place and to put them on Medium. And I thought, well, I can do that, but I'm a... I'm a Wikipedia sort of person. I'm an open content person. I want to put this on an open content website where other people can contribute as well. And I was like, I've heard of Local Wiki before. I'm going to put it on Local Wiki. And then I was like, this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I've been a Wikipedia editor for a long time. Wikipedia prohibits doing original research and using your own experience. But, like, I could include in the Local Wiki article that there's a beautiful cast iron staircase if you just look inside the fire escape. <laughs> And you can't put that on Wikipedia. There's no source for that. Like, I don't even have a picture of it. But I know it exists. You know, I'm, I'm a reliable source. Like, my lived experience is valid in this website. Ah, huh, interesting. <laughs> so, so, 
I, you know, I found this old uh, former police station in my neighborhood, and I started researching the history of this, you know, sort of strange, uh, not entirely abandoned, but mysterious former police station. And I found that in the 1990s, it had been a dot-com company office. And this is just very strange in the history of the mission, like early mission gentrification. And I found out that the founder of this company was being quoted in like articles from 1996 about diversity in the tech industry, because he was a person of color. And there were like, really, it was just this weird like mind warp to be reading about these things from 1996. And that was really fun. Um, and, and depressing and fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, there's a telephone exchange building in my neighborhood that uh, was always cast a huge shadow on my friend's, uh, friend's apartment. So he was like, what is this building, Britta? Like, why? It bothers me. Uh, this one on the right there. The far right? Yeah, the far right, this tall telephone exchange building. And then that turned out to be really interesting because I learned about the community of the women who worked there as telephone operators. They had a funny little newsletter that you can find online, probably posted by somebody who's interested in genealogy and that sort of thing. And you know, they, they in their, their sort of building, they organized events, they organized picnics at Ocean Beach, they organized um, you know, little parties for people who had weddings. And it was just like, oh, this, this whole, you know, I am part of a women's group in the mission that has a hacker space. And it's just so fun to hear about other forms of professional women's like social groups in my neighborhood, which I had no idea I'd find out about that by researching this. Um, there's a Victorian house that was just cool. I learned that a guy lived there who loved it and really cared about it. Uh, this was a, uh, turned out to be a, uh, what do you call it? Like a engine room, a power generating station for the predecessor to the current Muni transportation system, the Market Street Railway system. And just like, I like buildings. I like their stories. Local Wiki gives me a place to write about them and share them. And I started sending links to like the local neighborhood blogs and they would post them. And I was like, ah, this is so much fun. <laughs> so what is this local Wiki thing? Where did it come from? Uh, well, well, you know, what is it? So in about 2004, which was only a couple years after Wikipedia got started, which was 2001, as Wikipedia was sort of growing, I suppose these people in Davis, a couple of students decided, I know what we're gonna do for Davis. We're gonna have a city wiki, just about the city. And this has grown extremely successful and popular. And I think uh, their statistics were like half of people in Davis use this wiki and like one in 10 contributes to it or something, um, something like that. So good. And you know, so sometimes people, at least in California, think of Davis as like this agricultural town, a cow town. You know, it's, it doesn't have, it's not the most glamorous town in the whole state. But the Davis Wiki really brings up all of that's fascinating and historic and beautiful about it. And these people who had been involved in the Davis Wiki decided they were going to expand this project to other cities. And in I think about 2010, they established this local wiki project to expand this idea. And they got some funding from Kickstarter. Uh, they got some, with a lot of community groups contributing to that. And they got funding from the Knight Foundation, which gives grants to things working on sort of local news and information and projects. Uh, good to point out, it's Local Wiki is an independent nonprofit, which is not related to the Wikimedia Foundation. Like, there are a lot of Wikimedia Foundation people who support the idea of the Local Wiki. Uh, but it, you can think of it as like, the baby step cousin of Wikipedia. It's a very small nonprofit. I don't even know if anybody's working there full time at the moment. It's got a couple of people who are kind of driving it along. And it's an open source project. It's, a, it's on GitHub. I file bugs there all the time. <laughs> um, they don't always get fixed, but it's fine. I file the bugs anyway. Um, Localwiki.org is kind of the, the homepage. Yeah, it's a. Uh, and a good thing to note about it is that unlike Wikipedia, there are very few rules. The way I think about that is on Wikipedia, you have millions and millions of people working on the same project. You need to build this whole society of laws to handle interactions between millions of people. But on a local wiki, you might have like a dozen people who are all in your city working on something. You can have a much more personal relationship with each other and you can verify each other's information just because you all are in the same city. You know 
if somebody's lying about there being a beautiful, adorable cat at the corner store. Like, you know, like who would, and anyway, who would lie about that? Like, just, just a list of all the best cats at the corner stores. It'd be great. <laughs> um, and like, you know, you don't need to verify that with sources. Like everybody knows it's true. <laughs> well, that's kind of the, the philosophy of local wiki, that your, your memories are valid. Um, you can put your own opinion into things. Uh, you know, and, and you kind of have to work it out if there's multiple perspectives on how to write a specific page. But you can also make a duplicate page with two different opinions on something. <sighs> why, why is this fun? I mean, I, I think in some ways this is, uh, if, if you kind of like look, the idea of local wiki already, I probably don't have to convince you too much about this, but I, I think there's a lot of civic pride and, and community building that can happen from people looking at their city and saying, like, what's beautiful about this? What can we write about this? It, it connects you to your home. You start, like I start, I have so much more fondness for those beautiful buildings now that I've written about them. You know, I walk by them and I think, that, that's, that's my building. You know, like, I know all about that building. I'm probably the expert on this building. <laughs> like, nobody ever bothered to research before, basically. Um, you know, it, it's a place for political and social activism. You can document, uh, you know, abuses of power. You can document, um, things that the city is doing wrong. You can document like a history of racism that has not been you know, fully covered in mainstream sources. And you know, minority viewpoints can be brought forward with this kind of community wiki thing. In my region, something that I am in favor of for my wiki is encouraging the preservation of historic buildings by bringing their stories forward. That when people are thinking of developing on that site, uh, they're going to find this story of the building, and that might, that's my dream anyway, that might influence some of their decisions on how to adapt that building. Or, you know, after I started doing some really in-depth research on a couple of buildings, I thought, well, I can s I've done basically all the research necessary to submit a request for this to be formally recognized by my county as a historic resource. Like, I, I, I'm still coordinating with a couple of the building owners, because you should really, like, talk to the building owner before you submit their house as a landmark, um, just in case they don't want that. I mean, you can submit it anyway, maybe, maybe ask them first. Anyway, um, but that's something, that's a dream I have. Uh, it supports your local economy and your local businesses. You can write about, you know, the wonderful person who runs the restaurant and its role in the community, because they probably don't have that documented on their website very well, because they're busy running a restaurant. You can get people who have lived there for a long time to transfer their knowledge and write it down for the younger generation and the newer generation. This is important in Isla Vista because it's a college town. It's mostly students. People move out very quickly. So we can get even generations of students, not even generations of like humans, to preserve and transfer their information down. Uh, you can share silly trivia with your friends, like the, the subway used to be a Taco Bell. And if you look at it real close, you can see the arches, and everybody's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fine. Like, I don't know if there's any sort of deeper meaning to that than just, like, that's awesome. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, I wish it was still a Taco Bell. Anyway. And everybody likes old pictures of places that they know and love. Like, I think that's nearly universally fascinating to see. Like, there was a person riding a horse down my street 100 years ago. That's weird. <sighs> so... I've been working a lot on getting this local wiki started for my favorite unincorporated place. And something to think about is, is marketing, which depending on your background and open stuff and technology might sound kind of dirty or yeah, but <laughs> like content marketing, like social media strategy, like uh, uh, but actually <laughs> marketing is a really useful thing to think about. You can borrow all of the strategies that people have built for like commercial purposes and like steal them away to make your non-commercial thing successful. The, you know, like Wikipedia's definition of marketing is basically identifying the value of your thing and communicating it to other people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so content marketing, partnerships, social media strategy, whole kind of outreach stuff is, is very important for getting this started. You can't do it by yourself. I mean, if you can, but. That's, that's hard. And it's more fun with other people. So this is something that I am calling content marketing. 
it was very important for me for the San Francisco Wiki and the Isla Vista Wiki to go deep on a few articles. Uh, even if that's the only article on your wiki is about this old police station. Because that, that demonstrates to everybody the potential of this wiki. And you can start using that to, to promote to people, like if you have this valuable <coughs> gem of a, of a page on your site. And yeah, meaty articles with photos. Uh, and, and thinking, that's sort of content strategy part of it is figure out what people want to read that isn't extremely well covered on the web already. You know, if you Google the topic and somebody already has a beautiful, well-illustrated blog post about that, you don't need to write about that. You know, find something that, that, that doesn't exist yet. Or something that's like covered in like a few sentences on like six different pages and you can centralize it. Um, and as you're getting started, writing about something that people are fond of, that people have affection for, that when you share that article with them, they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna post it to my Facebook page, because like, I love the, you know, that funny little building on the corner. I love that park. You know, the, the kind of like affection and pride is a wonderful kind of emotional stickiness to this kind of project. Yeah, put these articles on your wiki homepage, send them to your friends, email them to the neighborhood blogs, post them to the subreddit for your neighborhood or area. Just like start, start getting that out there and seeding the idea in people's minds that local wiki is something cool. Uh, yeah, this is a long slide. Finding existing organizations and enthusiasts and inviting them and making friends with them. So this can be, uh, you know, if you're got like the cool local history person who just tweets all the time, like make friends with them on Twitter and be like, how about you like shift over and put some stuff on the local wiki? And they'll be like, oh yeah, you're cool, I'll try it out. Or send emails to all kinds of people and ask them for information. And make friends with people in person. We have, <laughs> oh, something I found extremely useful for my project was there's a Facebook group called Damn Right I Grew Up in Goleta. <laughs> where people, <laughs> this is exactly, literally what it's called. Because uh, Goleta is kind of the, the region that Isla Vista is in. Um, it's actually the next door city, but the boundaries are kind of sloppy. Um, and there are people who have lived in Isla Vista since the 1940s who post pictures of the farm that their dad ran with the, them as a little kid with a cow in the place where there's now like a huge apartment complex. You know, they just share that as part of like local pride and nostalgia. And they, they love talking about this stuff. You know, I post a link about, you know, the old coffee shop that used to be there. They're like, oh yeah, my sister worked there. And I'm like, oh, can you introduce me to your sister? I have some questions. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's so much fun. So uh, neighborhood blogs, they love having cool stuff to post. And some of them have writers that might want to contribute to your wiki. Uh, college and high school students and teachers, one of the most effective things I've done was getting in contact with students who were co-teaching a student-led class about the history of the area and saying like, I know what you want to assign for homework. You want to assign editing the wiki as homework. They're like, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> and so they did. I, you know, uh, at the end of the quarter, I had like 20 people contributing articles to this wiki that has mostly been written just by me. <laughs> oh, so much fun. I, and then I went and tried to thank everyone and tried to invite them to my editor group. And I didn't really get them to follow up after the class, but it was still a really fun experience. And I think it was good for them as students to feel to do something like contributing to that. Wikipedia has this kind of program for students contributing to Wikipedia, so I just kind of borrowed that idea. That they already have a, like a campus ambassador program. Oh, this keeps going. Yeah, people who have lived there for ages. Like, I just went and talked to some who I knew and t at, walked around the neighborhood with them and said like, what, what was this? And they were like, oh, I don't know, let me ask my friend. And <laughs> it was like, it was, it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, the informal mayors of a place. If you ever read uh, Jane Jacobs and her work, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, she thinks to you, she has this concept of um, the guy who, or a woman who's on your block and who knows everyone on the block and kind of like sits on their stoop and like they have an eye on everyone. If you go and talk to them, they know what's going on and they know it was there 100 years ago. Uh, churches, businesses, business associations, historical societies, genealogical and family history groups. I haven't even really tried contacting the historical society in my area. Uh, <laughs> I probably should. I, they mostly do kind of the more agricultural, family-oriented history, and my place is a student town. 
that they don't really pay much attention to, but I probably should talk to them anyway. Uh, the local Wikipedia editors and Flickr photographers in the area, they're already doing this kind of thing. The subreddit for your city, uh, the Code for America brigade volunteer, like civic contribution meetups, often have some kind of partnership with local wiki. I know like in Seattle. And uh, you know what is right for your region. You know the social structure of volunteers and civic building people. Like, talk to them. <laughs> like, you can't do this on your own. Like, you have to kind of embed it and make it useful to these people. And that's also just fun. Yeah, here's, here's an email I sent to a church. If you want an example, I was like, I'm a person in your area. This is a nonprofit volunteer project. I you know, say so that I don't think I'm trying to sell them something. And you know, I want to hear about your church. That's the church. It's the most beautiful thing in the entire neighborhood. It's like wow. triangular. Like this is one of the things I want to get registered as a historic landmark. And you know, I showed them what I'd already written. And I had a specific question for them. And they emailed me back and they were like, oh yeah, here's like three PDFs of an article and this beautiful like amateur history, well-researched document written by one of their pastors in like 1996. And I was like, oh, maybe you should put that on your website too. And they're like, oh yeah, we never thought of that. So, and I was looking at their Facebook page and they had been using one of my pictures from Flickr as their Facebook page picture. And I was like, I like these people. <laughs> <laughs> they're really nice, they're cool. And like they already have kind of a commitment to the community in community building, so they were a good person to talk to. Um, that worked really well. I also sent a bunch of emails to people that never get responded to, but you know, once you kind of have a template like this, it's, it's pretty easy. It's like, send lots of emails, just random people. It doesn't even matter. You know, like, go to the grocery store and be like, does anyone know when this grocery store was built? Like, <laughs> You know, sometimes it's run by a family and they just want to talk to you about, like, you know, the work their uncle did. And it's fun. It takes a lot of work, but it's fun. Yeah. So on the wiki homepage, I list everything that we've written so far, especially, which was especially important in the early days when we only had like 10 articles. I put in a bunch of pictures because some people just want to click a picture and find out more about the picture. Some people want to read a list and find the one thing they're interested in. Like having multiple kinds of entry points into the wiki is an interesting concept. Like some people want to search for something. Some people want to just look at all the pictures of the bridges. Like you kind of like got to understand what people are looking for and, and, and provide multiple yeah, ways of, of accessing what's in there. Um, oh, and I, and I have a brief intro on the top of this page you can't see with what the goals of the wiki are and how to contribute and how to get involved in our communications channels, which are the next couple things I'll talk about. You're going to want to have both a way of promoting the wiki and a way of collaborating with other editors because the wiki doesn't really have talk pages like Wikipedia does. And even that wouldn't really be very interactive. So what we have for promotion is primarily a Facebook page, because we are a student community where everybody's on Facebook. And I'll talk a little more about that. But if everybody in your neighborhood uses email for all of the neighborhood organizing stuff, if you want to do email, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, neighborhood blog, should you put it on Medium? I don't know. Should you try to get the local newspaper to run a column? Maybe. Uh, should you print it out and put it in the local coffee shop? Like, is that where people hang out and talk about stuff? Like, it, it really depends on, on, on the type of people and what they're already doing. Uh, so for collaboration, again, we have a Facebook group because we're a bunch of students mostly. All the community organizing about rallies and protests already happens on Facebook. Those are the people you want for your wiki. And, but, if your group is, if your people are not on Facebook, you know, Google Groups mailing list. Uh, is this really a community that likes to talk to each other in person? In-person meetups, uh, Slack chat. I don't know. It it depends. Uh, email groups can often be like a good default if you're not sure. Basically, everyone uses email, unless your community is very young. You might want like a Snapchat group. I don't know. <laughs> does, that, does that exist? <laughs> Who knows, right? You gotta go go to where the people are. This is our Facebook group. It's really helpful for an outreach and whenever I do something in terms of changing like a, how I promote the wiki, I document it on here. Uh, you get random people wandering in and say like, hey, I found a wiki, I know something cool. Can I help with it? And 
that's fine. I have a Facebook page. And the very interesting thing about our Facebook page is the local wiki nonprofit has a in-kind donation of ad money from Facebook. So I post stuff, and the guy who runs local wiki occasionally puts like, you know, $10 on my post. And then it reaches thousands of people in the area. And what's especially interesting about this for Isla Vista is that Isla Vista has about 20,000 people in it. And if you put about $20 on a Facebook ad thing, it's targeted to the community, it can reach about 20,000 people. I was like, I've just taught, or at least exposed, the entire community to my architectural history <laughs> essay. Like, they've probably never even thought that I live as to had architectural history. It's really exciting. And people comment on it. Like, it's just really nice for outreach to people who would not necessarily have thought of, like, I'm going to follow the whole local history wiki. So there's lots of things that a local wiki can use to be successful. Uh, people who just want to content contribute, contribute content are extremely helpful. People who fix up stuff that other people have written, uh, copy editors. People who want to do that kind of social media promotion. People who want to take pictures. People who want to put articles on the map feature that local wiki has. Uh, somebody who's an organizer, a recruiter, an encourager. And somebody who says yes. <laughs> it's a very important role in this kind of community project. Because people are going to come up and say, like, can I add this? Like, would it be OK if I did this? Because they're very polite. And you just, just have to be there to just say yes. Like, <laughs> that's, that's all. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is often overlapping with like a recruiter role. Um, People are very polite sometimes. Really quick research advice. If you are doing some kind of, if you want to write some kind of historical articles, is uh, Googling the address of a building is kind of like sending an arrow through time, because it's this unique identifier for that building. I mean, sometimes addresses change, but usually they don't change very quickly. And so you can find all kinds of old stuff, what that building used to be, just by Googling the address. Um, you want to format it a couple different ways to find different ways that people format it, but you know. Uh, searching a newspaper site, often the newspaper's uh, archives are not well indexed by Google. Uh, searching Google Books and Google Scholar, like these are other options when you Google stuff. Asking people for their memories, really fun, just write them down. And including lots of quotes from your sources and linking to your sources is important. Uh, no topics are too small. Write about what you find personally interesting. Are you ready? Yeah, it's pretty simple. It has like a visual editor type tool once it loads. Yeah, you edit it. And you make things bold or don't. It's relatively simple. The actual most complicated part of editing is that you're going to run into some weird bugs because this kind of visual editing interface is kind of tricky to program. And like sometimes if you make a certain caption, it'll like turn out in a really weird place and you have to fix it somehow. But like that's just the kind of thing you kind of have to fiddle with a little bit. Um, yeah, I feel like we should start talking about editing or answering questions and stuff. If people have questions, uh, thank you so much. Thank you.